Shalom Lech Merbeisa, I parshes mishpatim, Ere Shabbos Kodesh parshes mishpatim. The program is 11 at 11, heard each and every Thursday evening at this time. And if you want to be a shutif in the mechodet we're making, then all you have to do is let people know about this program. It's Kedai, they should hear this, where we give insights and analysis into current events within the prism and perspective of the G'dayli Yisrael of yesteryear. We're joined, hopefully, by our co-hosts, Rav Agoyin, Rav Yaakov Hamnik, Amy Bich, and Rav Yenison. Hope is joining with us as well. I just want to mention that the, the ratgut of, of what's going on with the Galochim and with, with this interfaith kind of stuff in the Hampton Synagogue, Schneier is hosted or hosted some kind of thing with the Mormons in the synagogue. Uh, it, it just goes on and on and on, and uh, it's getting from bad to worse. And I say this because today we have the, the smoking gun, basically. The smoking gun that somebody put on my chat, a reference to two truths that Ramesha Feinstein Zetzal wrote in 1967 the Misparim. This is in Yeridea Chayle Gimel, and uh, it's Chuvis Mem Gimel. It's a twofer. It's two Chuvis in one section Mem Gimel. And Rav Hamdik was kind enough to go and research this in the, uh, in the Igris Moshe. And it's really, uh, I, I think he'll agree with my terminology, it's Mamisha's smoking gun. In the first case, Dr. Bernard Lander, who later founded Toro, was a young rabbi in 1967, a fairly young member of the RCA, the Stadris, and he had committed to, uh, to participating with the synagogue council or something like that in some sort of an interfaith ecumenical dialogue or discussion, not necessarily on theology not necessarily a theology, with, uh, with priests. And he writes to Rav Moshe, and Rav Moshe speaks in the strongest possible shyness. Rav Moshe says that underneath all of this ecumenical discussion, Rav Moshe, the God of Hadar, the Eni Ho'edah, says that there is ultimately an ulterior motive. And I would just refer to Rav Moshe doesn't say this, as this is, Rav Moshe says, in former days they used to do it by violence, etc., etc. They persecuted the Yidden. He said, now there's a different approach. And basically what he's saying is what we referenced very briefly last week, when the Esav comes to us with fraternity and with dialogue and with ecumenicism, etc. And Rav Moshe tells him that even though he committed to go, he absolutely should back out, and he uses terms like mesis umadiach for those people who participate in this kind of thing. But he doesn't stop there. In his second chilek of the truth is a letter that he writes to Rabbi Yosef Ber J. B. Salavechik of YU, in which he urges Rabbi Salavechik to join him and to sign a document absolutely forbidding this kind of... of uh, interfaith ecumenism, he uses those terms and dialogue, etc. And he even has a Nusach where he um, spells out how he wants Rabbi Shalabajik to sign on with him to this Nusach, and if not, to propose a, another Nusach and to sign on. Now, historically, I don't know if Rabbi Shalabajik ever did that, ever cooperated with Ramosh, and to what extent. Well, he certainly but we see now that even without a Bramnik, even if it's just a regular priest, to have him come into a shul, even to discuss anti-Semitism, Israel, some social type of things, etc., cooperations, according to Moshe, it's, out, it, it's absolutely forbidden. And therefore, we come back to that with Ephraim Goldberg. Uh, by the way, I just want to add this point, because uh, we learned it together. <laughs> That, that it, it, he specifically uses language that uh, to forestall naivete. In other words, he says that even if the guy means well, and he certainly doesn't intend to give any support to the, uh, you know, uh, Abajazar, and and he's just trying to show uh, a good relationship and and and, and comedy. He's C O M I T Y. 
he says that, uh, no, that you, you can't use any of those excuses. You're going to end up being Bechal Mesis in a very severe language. Not to, uh, you fool yourself. I think there's also an implication, or more than an implication, more than an inference of Moshe's letters, that that even if in a particular case it seems to be, as you put, it's a comma T with a T, and it seems to be harmless, etc., but the takeaway is going to be that it's going to be utilized in effect right. to, to create a negative relationships that could lead in other situations to other people being co-opted, unfortunately, by the ultimate goal. So, Kal V'choyma, Ben B'nai Shal this is for a regular priest, but, but for somebody who's a Meshulit, who's a, of Jewish extraction, and who speaks the holy role of talk that we played in many, many different forums, he's, he's spoken like this Bramnik for Goldberg to stubbornly have him on. And this is a tremendous indictment, not only. In other words, he is revolting against the malicious fact of 50 years ago, or 55 years ago. And it, what, what bothers me is this is another thing where we're going south. Where is, if, if not to stand up for the covered even of Ramesha, where is the OU? Where is our good Israel? Where are our Bonim? Where are people to speak out against this? This has been a tremendous preacher together, and I'm really edified. I'm, I'm, I'm very thankful that somebody brought this, these truths of Ramesha to the attention of the public. And while on that subject, I would mention as follows, that somebody went ahead who was a Talmud of uh, Shechta, and spoke to him, spoke to his wife in particular, and she said his name. He never sanctioned, he never agreed with what Goldberg is doing. He's remaining neutral. Okay, so that what you see, I'm, I'm saying parenthetically that his two sons went down there. It wasn't a signal from Rabbi Shechter that he approved of what was going on. Respectfully, it's Torah, Hebrew, and I don't think it's really acceptable at this late stage. And the damage that was done for Rabbi Shechter to say, listen, I don't want to be involved in this. Uh, there's a Rebbe Feinstein, there's a Matthias here. Your own two sons went there and conveyed, therefore, by putting out a tweet on Twitter and smiling and posing with Goldberg, they, they, they conveyed terrible, terrible anti-Rebbe anti-logic, anti-Yiddishkeit, anti-God message. And I don't think Rabbi Shechter, with all due respect, I don't think he could just say, or his wife can just speak for him and say, he doesn't want to be bothered with this, please don't pressure him, no call. Etc. Etc. To whom much is given, much is expected, and it's really and terrible. More than that, more than that. Once, once someone is already uh, distorting your words, then that creates a much greater obligation to go back and straighten it out. It's, it's, it's terrible. It's disappointing. It's painful. Rabbi Shachter is a very cultural person, but this is yeah. terrible, terribly, terribly pa- painful and disappointing. It's it's just I, what can I tell you? It's uh, it goes from bad to worse.